There is just electricity down on the main stage here at the Paramount okay. Theater in Seattle. It is an unbelievable setup. And uh, let's set the stage here with our featured drafter, Owen Turtenwald. Owen finished second at this very event last year, and he wants it more than anybody. You know, Owen's going to have to get fortunate in that third pack to really get hooked up. Otherwise, it's going to be like this. He's going to have a bunch of Don Griffs and, you know, maybe a borrowed race to win the game. There's nothing wrong with it but it's not what you were hoping for when you sit down for your world championship draft. This is the point in the draft where we see a full committal to I'm definitely black and I'm definitely white now at this point. He didn't did pass up those remember, two Remember, we know he's being passed to by Owen and we know Owen is solidly in white blue. Okay, this is a little bit of a miss here for Yuya, which is really unfortunate for pick two. Is he gonna have to second pick survive that end here? He might have to. Oh, oh, Som oh Somberwald Stag. Probably gonna be game here. Ooh, no, no, I spoke too soon. Oh no, he has the Mausoleum oh, Wanderer. But the to Mausoleum Wanderer to count it. And that Mausoleum Wanderer just wandered into the pantheon of best Mausoleum Wanderers yeah. of all time. Yeah, you know, and the one thing that Tomata really has done very well is, is curve out. He yeah. certainly both uses games. mana both games. So mm. this is the point of Tomata's thing kill. Should I go for blessed lines here? It's yeah. interesting. I mean, looking at the board state, Owen only has the two blockers. I think this is basically over. Yeah, it is. And he takes a look at his life pad and a rough start for Owen Turtenwald and a great one for Tomata. 1-0. Wow. Yuya went deep here. He is playing some fringe playables and kind of <laughs> making it work, I have to say. Out of the far bogs. Why not? So five mana, five three, a classic Yuya Watanabe deck. You know? <laughs> and somehow he's winning this game. And now he's gonna get blown out by that survive tonight. <laughs> wow, he's just gonna keep curving out with Thalia now. Jeez. This is a clinic in beatdown from Sam Pardee. And that's gonna be game Sam Pardee runs over Shota Yasaoka. So it looks like BBD is on the three color special hill. He is. Here. He's got a Mourn Willow here, but he's going to sacrifice it immediately to a Lashweed Lurker. Uh, and he's going to put it on top of his own line of break because it looks like you <laughs> actually stole it with Rise from the Grave. Wow. If you're scrapping for cards in a draft, you know, the power level is not that high. Mm -hmm. Going to three color deck with lots of power is actually a very valid plan. And he it, does, in fact, throw a Wretched Grip yeah. on the stack again. How is Reed Duke supposed to compete with this? Yeah, Ryu's just falling behind on the board very quickly here. Over over two turns, basically, Luis managed to, you know, add three fours and three twos and four fours to the board. Okay, so this is an interesting turn, though, because Reed Duke is going to be able to get both creatures out of Ooh. the way here. Now, can he actually get in for lethal? I think he's, he has lethal because he has incendiary flow as well in his hand, so he'll just... He can just kill Luis. him from here? That is the third trigger. It's five power and he's and on seven. And that does it. Reed Duke steals a game from Luis Scott Vargas. Wow. And look at this elk wow. beat down. <laughs> Second copy of Somberwald Stag, a card that you're usually super happy to get just one of in a draft. Yeah, the herd is being assembled here. And I'm going to tell you what, that's not all of the Somberwald Stags that he has in the stack. Really? <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> look at Sigris. He's so happy. He drafted one of the most Sigris decks possible. There's a Necropod now for Tiago Sapphire. The Morker Necropod, of course, massive at 7-7. Seven, seven. Yeah, we were talking about the green deck having the bigger creatures earlier, but uh, Morker <laughs> Necropod is now, pretty Remember, out, remember pretty when I said outdig. that Mike Sigrist went deep? Yeah, this is a really exciting game state here, Marshall. Uh, I mean, we've had lots of creatures trading off in the early game, a little bit of a back and forth here with BBD starting off strong, then JC kind of taking back the mid game. And now that the dust has settled, there's actually very few creatures on either side of the board and both players at middling life totals. This could come down in, in large part just due to top decks. JC is gonna say, I don't think you have anything. These are all lethal threats. Brian Bronduin with a swamp has to extend the hand, and JC Tau. Oh, it is so close. He's got him down to three life. He just had two, basically three powered flyers. And he just has not been able to chip in for that last three points of damage. Yuya Watanabe just hanging on for dear life. This is a crucial moment in the game, depending on how Yuya blocks. 
Yeah, and once he orders him that way, then Yuya knows immediately what's about to happen. You see him say, yeah, 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 and there it is. Borrow Grace for the blowout. Yeah, so he went from like absolutely nothing to part the water veil, to drawing into the pieces of the puzzle that he needs, and now he's chaining pieces of the puzzle together. Of course, his deck is really spell dense right now because he has so many lands in the battlefield, so these pieces of the puzzle and these anticipates are just getting so much value for him. Oh man, is that a Shia betraying the Nissa? Going to the other side of the battlefield. That is game. Yeah. He found Emrakul. Wow. Wow, this is huge too because with that Chandra Flame Caller on the battlefield, Steve Ruby can actually minus five on the next turn and just wipe away Kazuyuki's entire board. Wow. Oh, and Emrakul, the promise then coming down for Takamura. So Jace bounces Forest, Emrakul's trade, and the reason that Emrakul's traded there is if they didn't trade, then Steve Rubin could untap with Jace, bounce Takamura's Emrakul, and attack with Lumbering Falls and his own Emrakul, so that would, would have been lethal there. So Takamura wisely sees that and does trade the Emrakuls. Things have really settled into a, a top deck for I mean, what, what a game this has turned out to be. Oh, yeah. Like, this, the, just the way it's evolved. The grind like... is real. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's... Whoa! Hula <laughs> Mug! Traverse for Ulamog. That wow. was nuts. And then we see the handshake. Steve Rubin takes this game. Wow, he crushed Takamura's dreams. Dude, I didn't even know he had Ulamog in his deck. And this is super important because this lets Siggy tap down Marcio Calvaro's island, um, which will force Marcio to cast the Elder Deep Fiend this turn instead of leaving it up to play defensively on Mike's following turn. So I believe we will see Mike's Emrakul finish the job here. No, I think he's just dead. I think, and I think just he knows he's dead. dead, but you know, if this is the world championship, you gotta make your opponent yeah, play it out. You're right? totally right. And that does it, Seth Manfield. Ooh. Okay. He's five and one. He's gonna knock Mike Sigris down to five and one. There's a spin up. Ooh, wow, but here comes Tamio off the top, tapping down those two creatures, and that will spell the end for Mike Sigris. Can Owen find a win here? I mean he has clearly built out a massive board state and now has just resolved the collective company again. He's got four clues on the battlefield. And it feels like he's kind of sorting out for himself. Is this game gonna go for a while? Do I actually have good attacks? There's Emrakul, she has arrived. So the question here is how much havoc can we do creep on this board? I mean, this is a tough board to wipe away. Look at Owen's board state, but Reed has three, five, the spiders and an Emrakul that he can run all these creatures into. There's the two collected companies. Two collected companies <laughs> and no Reflector wow. Mage. And Reed Duke, with the help of Emrakul, is going to take down that game. Ryan Brown doing is up a game, and now he's up the match. He's 6 and 1. Wow. He did an interview with Rich where he said, You know, I'm kind of the underdog. I'm a gold level pro in a sea of Hall of Famers and Platinums.